Alright, lads, today we are going to be doing something that we haven't done in a while, and that is a guide to this new epic raid, the Awakened version of Noitoro. Now, the main reason why I am doing this is because this one is very difficult, and the bonus characters for this epic raid doesn't really help. And when I'm playing with my guild, we're clearing in like 20, 30 seconds very easily, but I know a lot of people out there don't have access to, you know, active guild mates, or just people that know what they're really doing a lot of the times, even when I'm playing by myself, you're going to be playing with random people, you're going to be open it to the public for people to join, and a lot of the times, it's very difficult because no one knows what they're really doing, especially because this epic raid is a bit RNG, and depending what the attacks the character does do, it's not set in stone what the Noritora does decide to do. So this video is here to help some of you lads out there to understand the pattern for this Noritora, and to help you farm this epic raid for the month of June. So with that said, lads, let's sit back, let's jump into this epic raid, breaking down his attack patterns, and the best way to tackle this epic raid. So upon spawning into the Noitora Epic Raid, you want to position yourself to be at the four back squares, essentially where you spawn in. You don't want to go any closer on. If you need to, then do that, but make sure you're always in these two squares that I'm standing in. This is the best way to know exactly what attacks are coming at you, especially for the first wave. Now, the first thing Noitora is going to do is target one specific player and throw out a very easily dodgeable attack. You shouldn't be getting hit by this. But what is getting to a lot of people is the trick throw. Now, the reason why this is very annoying for a lot of you, if you haven't already realized it is that this doesn't have a set pattern there are three attacks that he can do during this trick throw and the best way to know exactly what he's doing is to look where the scythes or these vortex scythes are spawning in this case it spawned on the right side of the map as you can see by the bottom right square highlighting yellow if that is the case you'd want to position yourself to be on the left side of the map to keep your distance from that scythe but do keep in mind like it doesn't always spawn on the right side it can spawn on the left side and if that's the case you do the exact opposite and you go to the right side. Now, right after this first attack, there's also a chance that I can spawn in on both sides, and in that situation, it's going to cross each other. So the best position for that, and this one can be kind of tricky, it does take a couple practices to get the uh, exact position down, you want to stand right on the line, but a tad bit forward, and in doing so, both sides will just fly past you. But don't get too close, because right after that, he's going to do a side spin, and if you're in that distance, you're going to get one shot. It's very easily dodgeable, so nothing there, and that is the first wave, of phase one. The second wave of attacks is going to start right after, and Noritora is going to attack in horizontal lines. Now, the easy way to dodge this one is to stand in the safe spot, and then right after that first attack is done, you're going to dodge into, again, the safe spot. It's very easily dodgeable. You can see how easy it is. Now, one thing to keep in mind is right after this, and during this, actually, he's going to cover half of the map in a red zone where you're going to take damage. So, best advice I can actually give for this one is to stay near the middle of Noritora to see what what side of the map is getting hit. It can be horizontal, it can be vertical, just go to the safe spot and then you should be fine. And then right after this, two towers are going to light up green. And it's very important you pay attention to what the text is saying. Because that is indicating on what kind of towers it's going to attack. What way is it going to attack. So in this case, it said horizontal rook. So what I did, knowing that, I'm not going to stand in a horizontal line towards the green squares. So in this case, because it's said horizontal, it's attacking the entire squares horizontally to that green square. At the same time, it could also say vertical, and that way it's going to attack up and down. So knowing that these green squares said horizontal, I positioned myself to know that if it's attacking sideways, it can't hit me. So it's very important you pay attention to the text that is on your screen, because that is indicating the direction that it is going to be attacking you in. Now, wave 3 is going to begin with a very familiar move that we already seen and talked about, the trick throw. Now, again, this can spawn in on the left side of the map, it can spawn on the right side, and it can spawn in both sides of the maps. Depending on where the yellow tiles start, make sure you position yourself to be ready for it. At the same time, Noritora can do two different things. He can either suck you in, or push you out, and you need to make sure you're in a position to be ready for both of them. In the case of he sucking you in, it's very easily dodgeable, just make sure that the scythe isn't actually going to get near you, and then when he sucks you in, just keep your distance away from the scythe on the outer edges, and not too close to the Noitora, where he actually is going to do a scythe spin that will one-shot you if you're too close to him. If you are too close to him, make sure you flash step instantly out of that to avoid that one-hit kill. In the case where he pushes you out, you want to make sure you're not too close to the Noitora, because at that point he's going to do another Another side spin that will one shot a larger portion of the map. So just make sure, again, the 
biggest key here is the positioning. You want to make sure that you're not too close to Duncan OG and you're not too far away that you're going to get pushed to the outer rim of the map where you'll potentially die or lose damage or even get slowed, which again would ruin a lot of runs, especially if you are rocking a full stand build. And with that, that is the first phase done. After that move, he's going to start repeating it from wave one and he'll keep repeating those waves until you finally get to the second phase, which we're about to talk about. So the second phase of Noritora is going to start off with a very easily dodgeable move. Essentially, what's going to happen here is Noritora is going to spawn in four trick throws. Four scythes are going to fly around the map very, very quickly to the point where you can't dodge them. So the best thing to do is to stay in the four inner towers. In that distance, you're not going to get hit, and all you got to do is just dodge the attacks that Noritora is going to throw at you. So within this part, Noritora is going to throw four attacks at you. Now, two of them can one-shot you, and that is the purple attacks, and then there are two red attacks that they will damage you, but they won't one-shot you. So if you're not rocking a full stand build, you can actually kind of afford to take damage here, but it's best advised not to get hit, especially with how easy these are actually able to dodge. Now, since you are so up close to the Noritora, one flash step to the left or right will give you enough distance to dodge the attacks. Now, he's going to cycle between a damage hit to a one-shot hit. So make sure you don't get hit by any of them, and the best advice to do is just to stay behind the attacks. If you do that, you're going to keep your distance, you're going to be safe, and you're going to be able to do a lot of damage against this Noitora. Now, the second wave of this phase is that he's going to do a forward raid. Now, this is going to cover a large portion of the map, and he's going to do three attacks back to back. So the best thing to do is stand in the first safe spot that you do see, and then flash step like I'm doing. You can just go back and forth, right? You flash step once, and then you flash step back, and now you're safe. Very easily done but make sure that you're not too close to the Noitra because he then after that is going to do two circular AoE attacks around him which again isn't going to one shot you but it will be doing damage so just make sure you're not on the side of him just keep your distance if you want to you can also be right in the middle where you will actually be able to dodge those attacks and with that that is the second wave of this phase done now right after this this is where the trickiest part of this entire phase does happen so essentially what you want to do is position yourself to see the entire map if you want to you can stand in the middle at the same time now what he's going to do is spawn in two trick throws so two scythes are going to fly across the map they always cross each other one goes vertical one goes horizontal now the thing you want to be looking out for is the green squares the green towers that light up this is going to indicate what portion of the map is going to be safe from the 75 percent one shot kill right so in this situation the green towers spawned in the upper left of the map so that means the lower right side of the map is going to be the safe spot and this can go either way if it spawned in the top right the lower right is the safe spot if it goes into the bottom right the upper left is the safe spot and if it goes into the lower left the upper right is going to be the safe spot now in this safe spot which are four tiles in the corner three of those are going to get hit by the scythes that are spawning in the map that are going up and down right so only one position is going to be the safe spot in this case we were in the lower right and i positioned myself to be in the lower left tile of the safe spot and that kept me away from the scythes that were going vertical and horizontally so it's very easily dodgeable the scythes you can easily just walk around you don't have to actually bother with them but the main thing to keep a lookout for here is the green squares because that is going to indicate what portion of the map is going to be safe from the one hit kill that he's going to dish out right after and with that that is the second phase done now let's talk about phase three the final wave is then going to begin spawning in a green tile in the middle right tile of the map. This is right next to Noitora. It's always going to spawn here right when phase 3 does begin. The best thing to do here is to literally stand in that green tile. It's going to keep you safe from the attack that is going to go around it. And then right after that, he's going to do the exact same move, but in the upper side of the map on the left side middle square, right? So the green icon is the safe spot. Stand in the middle of that, and then you will be safe. Now, right after he does that move, he wants to twist up a bit, and he's going to do a side spin. So if you are to too close to the Noitora, you're going to get one-shotted. So my best advice is to stand in that green square and then flash step out once the attack has been done, right before he does do the side spin. And that is the first wave of this phase. Right after that, Noitora is going to summon two more scythes that are going to fly around the entire map on the outer side, right? So it's very similar to what we did with the second phase. You want to stand in the four inner towers next to Noitora. If you do that, you're going to keep yourself safe. At the same time, he's going to do multiple attacks horizontally. Some of them are going to be one shot attacks which are the purple ones and some of them are just going to be no more attacks that are just going to damage you all you got to do for this attack is just to stand in the initial safe spot the line that is the safest that has no indication uh, that it's being attacked then right after the first attack happened you just flash step forward and now you're safe from this attack 
And then right after that, no breather time, he's going to start the final attack straight away. So what he's going to do here is spawn in more slides that are going to start from the middle of the map. And they're going to make their way to the corner and then start flying around the outer rim or the outer towers of this map. So the best thing to do is to kind of move yourself in a clockwise position. You don't want to go anti-clockwise because that means if you're on the outer side at least, you're going to get hit by these scythes. Now what he's going to do here is push you away and also suck you in. So the first part is that he pushes you away. So you want to make sure that you're still somewhat in the middle so that when you do get pushed back, you're not going to get hit into the sides that are spinning around clockwise. Again, position yourself that you're not going to get pushed back into the wall and position yourself that you're not too close. So when he does do the pushback, he's instantly going to do a large radius side spin that is going to one shot you. So know the position, know the map, know your location and know exactly where you're going to get pushed into. And then right after that, he's going to do the opposite. So instead of pushing you away, he's going to suck you in. And then right when he sucks you in, he's going to do the small radius side spin. So the best thing to do again is to keep yourself near the middle so when you do get pushed in you can just flash step out and at that point you're going to be safe and the size will stop spinning and he'll repeat the first wave of this phase and that right there lads is the basic breakdown of the awakened version of Noitora. again this one is difficult for many reasons the attacks don't have a 100% set pattern some of them can be you know left or right so it can get a bit confusing but once you realize exactly what is up then it's perfectly fine and at the same time also the bonus characters for this specific epic rate isn't the the greatest. Uh, I actually recommend personally farming the Aran Yodo, the Rukia, and the Don Kanoji runs if you can get a full group of them. For the most part, my guild was able to get around 40 to 20 second runs when we were running with those characters. So I definitely recommend farming in those specific days. And I haven't really tried the other ones. I'm not too sure. But once you get a group of players that know what they're doing, they have good characters, then you're going to absolutely breeze through it. So it's very important you try to make a guild or join a guild that is active with active players that know exactly what they are doing. That being said, the lads, let me know if you still have any more questions in the comments below, I can try to help you out. I will be streaming some epic raids sometime soon, so if you are struggling, you can just join my stream and we can just try and beat it together. That being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I will be streaming Senkamon later today, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yay.